My name is Larry Miggins, and uh, I'm going to give this talk to the Florida Prep alumni on May 5th, 2018, in New York City. Here it goes. <clears throat> to begin with, I'm overwhelmed with joy and thanks and appreciate the votes of all those who made this honor possible. Most especially the Hall of Fame nominating committee, co-chaired by Kevin Rooney and Don McNamee with Father Christopher Devon S.J. To me, very few things are more memorable and endearing in my life than the idea of being inducted into Florida Prep Football Hall of Fame at the tender age of 92. How do they remember me? My class began in the fall of 1939, 79 years ago. And it was distinguished in three ways. Number one, we were the first class to enroll an, Africa, an African-American student in the class. His name was Dennis Barron, and he later earned a doctorate and taught at the college level. The second interesting first was we won two athletic city championships, baseball in 1940 and football in 1942. I had the good fortune to have played on both of these winning teams as a freshman and later as a senior. In my senior year in football, we played, I played both ways all season and did all the punting. Our best play, called 45, was a delayed pass I caught over the middle as a tight end and it usually went for 10 to 15 yards. I see the same play these days, every time I watch New England play football. You may have heard about the third incident, if so, it's very personal. When the famous Vince Scully was only 15 years of age, in his third year at the prep, he grabbed my shoulders at an assembly and said, Larry, someday you will be in the big leagues, and when you hit your first home run, I'll be the announcer and tell the world about it. And so it happened. In 1952, when I was playing for the St. Louis Cardinals against Preacher Roll, the Dodgers, I hit my first major league home run that day, and Vince Scully was the announcer and told the world about it. This was an incredibly joyous, fulfilled dream for two prepsters who were, that originated in the walls of the prep. Let me conclude with my most significant with the most significant teacher I had at the prep. He taught freshman religion and carried a pointer at all times. Every day, Father Anthony Glazier would wrap his desk or some sleepy, sleepy student's desk and say very loudly, religion should permeate every action of your lives. When you hear this every day for a whole year, you don't forget it, and it's true. He reminded us to love God by keeping his commandments, and don't die without forgiving those who have offended you, as did Christ. He also impressed upon us the need for pockets of prayer in your life. In other words, using your idle time when you can easily lift up your mind and heart to God in prayer. Times like waiting for red lights, walking alone, etc. I found an interesting pocket of prayer while playing professional baseball. It was when the National Anthem was played before each game. When we hear it played today, before each game, why don't we all offer a prayer for our country and for peace in this world? And as we say in Ireland, when they leave your home, God save all of you. Thank you. And may God love you all.